Beneath the shimmering Pacific Ocean lies a sleeping giant, an arc of fire and fury that encircles the basin in silence, waiting. But that silence is beginning to break. Over the past year, volcanoes have erupted in violent unison, earthquake swarms have rattled cities from Chile to Japan, and deep beneath the seafloor, tectonic plates are shifting with unnerving urgency. This is the Pacific Ring of Fire, a colossal geological belt responsible for 90% of the world's earthquakes and three-quarters of all volcanic eruptions, and it's waking up. What happens when the most volatile regions on Earth begin to stir all at once? Could a chain reaction of disasters be building beneath our feet, waiting for a single trigger to set off a global seismic event? Scientists are now racing to decode the signals, magma on the move, crust deforming, and pressure rising along fault lines that have slept for centuries. From the shadow of Alaska's restless volcanoes to the deep trenches off Japan's shores, today, let's explore the growing evidence that the Ring of Fire is entering a new era of unrest and the terrifying possibilities it may unleash for the millions living in its volatile shadow. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. Stretching more than 40,000 kilometers in a massive horseshoe-shaped band, the Pacific Ring of Fire passes through some of the most densely populated and economically vital regions on Earth. This zone is home to around 75% of the world's active volcanoes and about 90% of the world's earthquakes. For much of the 21st century, isolated eruptions and tremors have rippled along its edges. But recently, a disturbing pattern has emerged. Seismic swarms, awakening volcanoes, and rising tectonic tensions are becoming increasingly synchronized. From Alaska to Indonesia, Chile to Japan, the Earth appears to be preparing for a new cycle of violent upheaval. The Ring of Fire owes its existence to the constant grinding collision of tectonic plates. Along this fiery band, the Pacific Plate converges with several other massive slabs of Earth's crust, like the North American, Eurasian, Philippine, and Indo-Australian plates. As these plates shift, subduct, and grind past each other, immense energy builds up deep beneath the surface. When that energy is finally released, it does so violently, through volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and tsunamis. These interactions are most intense at subduction zones, where one tectonic plate is forced beneath another, generating deep-seated friction and melting rock into magma. Throughout history, the Ring of Fire has been the scene of some of the most catastrophic natural disasters. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, which killed over 230,000 people, was triggered along a fault zone on its western edge. The 2011 Tohoku earthquake off the coast of Japan, which was magnitude 9.1, unleashed a tsunami that devastated the Fukushima nuclear plant and caused more than 15,000 deaths. These tragedies are grim reminders of the ring's explosive potential. Yet today, an unsettling number of signs suggest that such disasters may not be isolated events of the past, but warnings of what's to come. Over the last two years, the Ring of Fire has shown escalating signs of reactivation. In Indonesia, one of the most volcanically active nations on Earth, the Mount Ruang volcano erupted violently in April 2024. The eruption sent ash plumes soaring tens of kilometers into the sky, grounding flights and forcing the evacuation of thousands. Simultaneously, other Indonesian volcanoes, like Semiru, Merapi, and Anak Krakatau, have entered new phases of activity. Their synchronized restlessness is worrying geologists, as it may indicate deeper regional magmatic shifts. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, both the Ta'al and Mayon volcanoes have become increasingly volatile. Ta'al, which erupted explosively in 2020, began swelling again in 2023, releasing toxic gas and prompting earthquake swarms beneath its lake-filled caldera. Mayon, with its perfect cone and deadly reputation, has shown increased lava extrusion and glowing nighttime activity, an ominous sign of a potential large-scale eruption. Further north in Japan, the usually restless Sakurajima volcano has intensified its eruptions, 
launching rocks and ash into nearby towns. Earthquake swarms near the Nankai Trough, a fault zone capable of generating magnitude 8-plus megathrust earthquakes, have raised fears of a long-anticipated disaster. Japan, with its sophisticated seismic monitoring network, has sounded multiple alerts over the past year, cautioning that these tremors may foreshadow something larger. On the eastern edge of the Pacific, Chile and Peru have also faced a rise in volcanic and seismic activity. The Nevados de Chilin complex in Chile and the Ubinas volcano in Peru have both shown increased emissions and ground deformation. Chile's extensive seismic network has detected more frequent tremors along the Nazca South American plate boundary, the very line that spawned the deadly 1960 Valdivia earthquake, the most powerful quake ever recorded at magnitude 9.5. Meanwhile, Alaska, sitting atop the Aleutian subduction zone, has not been spared. The Shisholdin volcano erupted multiple times in 2023 and 2024 while the nearby Tanaga and Great Sitkin volcanoes also showed increased activity. Beneath the ocean, deep seismic swarms in the Aleutian Trench hint at shifting tectonic stress, an ominous precursor to possible tsunami-genic quakes. Even the relatively quiet stretches of the ring, like the U.S. Pacific Northwest and Northern California, have recorded unsettling tremor patterns. The Cascadia subduction zone, quiet for over 300 years, is again under scrutiny. Scientists believe it is locked and ready to rupture, with the potential to unleash a magnitude 9 earthquake and trigger a tsunami that could inundate coastal towns from Northern California to British Columbia. Individually, these events might be seen as routine outbursts in geologically active regions, but collectively, they raise critical questions. Are we witnessing a broader reawakening of the Ring of Fire? Is there a larger tectonic pattern unfolding beneath our feet? Recent studies suggest that seismic and volcanic activity may indeed exhibit cyclical or cascading behavior. One model gaining attention is that of seismic triggering, where stress changes from one major earthquake or eruption can influence distant faults and magma systems. For example, the 2004 Sumatra quake is believed to have affected stress levels thousands of kilometers away. Another factor is slow slip events, silent, gradual movements along faults that don't immediately cause quakes but may serve as precursors to large seismic events. A growing body of satellite data, particularly from interferometric synthetic aperture radar, reveals subtle ground deformations that precede eruptions or earthquakes. These changes in surface elevation, sometimes just millimeters a year, suggest rising magma or the buildup of tectonic pressure. When correlated with seismic data, gas emissions, and thermal imagery, a clear pattern emerges. The ring of fire is not just restless, it is synchronizing. In 2023, a comprehensive global review by geophysicists from Stanford and the University of Tokyo propose that the Pacific Plate itself may be entering a new stress phase. Their model, based on decades of crustal movement data, indicates that interactions among its neighboring plates are intensifying. The implications are vast. Such a transition could result in decades of heightened seismic and volcanic activity. If the Ring of Fire is truly entering a period of heightened activity, the implications are not just regional, they are global. A megathrust earthquake in Japan could cripple global supply chains. A volcanic eruption in the Philippines could eject enough sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere to cool the planet. A tsunami generated by a quake in Chile could cross the Pacific in hours, devastating coastal cities across Oceania and North America. Moreover, the world's increasing dependence on coastal megacities many of which lie directly within this hazardous zone, makes us more vulnerable than ever. Cities like Tokyo, Jakarta, Manila, Lima, and San Francisco all sit atop deadly faults or within reach of tsunami-prone coastlines. Rapid urbanization, climate migration, and poorly enforced building codes in some areas mean that future disasters could affect tens of millions of people. The question of whether we can predict these disasters remains fraught. 
While technology has vastly improved our ability to detect precursors, predicting the exact time and location of a quake or eruption is still beyond our capabilities. What we can do is improve forecasting models, reinforce infrastructure, and invest in early warning systems. Countries like Japan and Chile have made extraordinary progress in earthquake resilience. Their early warning alerts, tsunami modeling, and public education campaigns have saved countless lives. But many regions along the Ring of Fire remain dangerously underprepared. Scientific collaboration, open access data, and increased funding for geological research are urgently needed. Global seismic networks must be expanded and maintained, and volcano monitoring stations upgraded with real-time sensors. As magma stirs and tectonic plates grind ever more restlessly beneath our feet, humanity stands once again at the mercy of forces beyond control. But while we cannot stop the Earth from moving, we can choose how we respond. We can listen to the warnings, learn from the past, and act before the next eruption, the next wave, the next quake.